Hello. Welcome to Megger's technical support video series, Frequently Asked Questions. In this video, we will discuss what does the discharge test form for the Torkel 900 series look like. Let's get started. The Torkel 900 series comes with its own software called the Torkel Weaver software. You can use the Torkel Weaver software to weave the test results on your laptop. The other software option available is in the form of PowerDB. PowerDB is a software which is used with most of our equipment. A lot of new Torkel users also happened to own other Mega products and were PowerDB users. Uh, they wanted to weave the discharge test results on uh, PowerDB as well. Now, to cater to such people and other users, we uh, added an import functionality on PowerDB for the Torkel 900. So now you can weave the Torkel uh, test data on the PowerDB software. Bear in mind uh, that the Torkel cannot be controlled from the PowerDB software. You can only weave uh, the test data uh, from the Torkel 900 series on your PowerDB software. The test data on the Torkel 900 series is stored in the form of XML files. Uh, these XML files can be exported to a USB stick and then you can download them on the local drive of your computer uh, from the USB stick. So once you have the files on your local drive, what you will do is you will start the PowerDB software. When you open up the light version, this is what you see. You would need to scroll down to battery test sets, select Torkel 900. When you do that, it brings up the battery discharge test form. You will see that the form is blank. What you will do is click on import Torkel 900 data and then select the XML file that you have downloaded uh, from the instrument. In this case over here I have a few XML files. I'm going to select one of them. Uh, so when I double click uh, on the file, it the test data on the file gets transferred over to the uh, PowerDB test form and I can see that the fields have populated. Let's just go over uh, this form. So here you can see the uh, nameplate information of the battery uh, which includes manufacturer, model, battery ID, uh, the cell voltage, number of cells on the string, the overall voltage, the nominal capacity uh, which is not the rated capacity of the battery but it's the uh, capacity in terms of the test parameters which is basically test duration times the test current okay uh, the nominal time which is the intended test duration is one hour below that you can see the instrument settings which are basically the test settings that were made on the instrument before uh, starting the test that includes the test method uh, which in this case was a constant current method and uh, the test current which was selected which is 25.5 amps uh, the limits that were set on the instrument uh, the warning limits and the stop limits uh, both on the torquel and the bvms then the uh, capacity calculation method uh, in this case we can see that the time uh, adjustment method was used you can see the correction factor, which is 0.966 here, based on the test temperature of 22 Celsius. If you scroll further down, you see a summary of the uh, discharge test results. Uh, the overall battery voltage test results are shown here, uh, where you can see the measured capacity, which is test current times the actual test duration. Corrected capacity takes the temperature correction factor into consideration. The capacity is shown in terms of percentage over here. Here you can see the actual test duration, which is 58 minutes and 20 seconds. Pause time is zero, which means the test wasn't paused uh, midway. The float voltage is shown, the open voltage, and the start voltage, and the end voltage. Uh, these, these voltage values are shown, and these are all overall voltage values. Then you can see a summary of the individual cell voltage data, uh, which is uh, measured by the BVMs. So you can see the minima and the maxima observed on various cells for the uh, float voltage 
and start voltage and the end voltage. Uh, as an example, if you want to talk about float voltage, the minimum value, the minimum float voltage value was recorded on cell number two, and the value that was recorded was 2.2. Uh, similarly, the maximum float voltage value was recorded on cell number 17 and uh, the value that was recorded was 2.216. The average values uh, for all these parameters are also provided in the last column over here. The event table shows you all the events that may have occurred uh, during the test. In this case, there weren't many events, just Two events are shown here, the first one corresponds to the start of the test and the second one is uh, the um, test ending and you can see that the reason for the test being stopped was voltage limit, uh, was the voltage limit being reached. If you scroll further down you can see the graphical representation of the test, here you can see the overall uh, voltage battery voltage graph with respect to time um, not just that you can also see a straight line being um, the, the straight line that you can see here is the capacity uh, <coughs> besides that you can also see the overall battery voltage warning and stop limits being shown on the on the graph if you scroll further down you can see the uh, the individual cell voltage data being shown in the form of a bar chart uh, these individual bars correspond to different cells so you can see 24 bars on this graph you can see the different colors on the chart and the legend kind of explains uh, the whole chart here if you scroll down you can see a summary of the uh, test data uh, shown in a tabular format uh, basically this table provides you uh, the values captured at different stages of the test uh, so you can see uh, the values measured at 25 percent 50 percent 75 percent and 100 percent of the nominal time uh, you can see here that the 100 percent column doesn't have any values and that's because uh, the test ended before uh, it could reach the uh, intended duration of one hour the last readings that were rec recorded are shown over here and you can see the minimum and the maximum values as well for all, uh, for these parameters. The BVM data summary is similar um, as well. You can see for all the cells, you can see the voltage, the float voltage value, the open voltage value, and the voltage values recorded at different stages of the discharge test. Um, and finally, you can see the minimum value and the maximum value uh, logged by the BVMs on each of those cells. You can create uh, another type of graph by clicking on this one, V cell graph. When you click on it, um, you see that this graph comes up where it shows you the, uh, this, the change in individual cell voltage with respect to time. Um, in this case, we are looking at the cell voltage graph for cell number one. So you can create graphs for individual cell voltages uh, by clicking on this drop down. You can you can pick the cell voltage uh, graph that you want to see. Or uh, you can also select multiple cells by clicking on cell range and then selecting the numbers uh, for, the, for the cells that you want to see. So for example, if I want to see the uh, cell voltage graph for cell numbers 1, 2, and 3. I can type 1, 2, 3 in here and then click on update and now I can see the voltage graphs for uh, for 1, 2, and 3, for cells 1, 2, and 3. Now if I want to include this graph in the uh, test form then I can click on send to form and that creates this graph on the test form. When I click on return to form, the window closes out and I go back to the test form and now I can see the cell voltage graph on the test form. If you don't want to weave uh, the graph on the test form, you can click on remove and it goes away. This concludes the video on what does the discharge test form for the Torkel 900 series look like.
visit the Mega YouTube channel for more videos, including technical webinars, product overviews, and other how to presentations similar to this one. Contact us for questions or more information about this topic, or for any support you may need for your electrical testing.